Hello, I'm Margaret Dumont, Director of Artist Services with the Durham Arts Council, here to talk a little bit about the Durham Arts Council's Emerging Artist Grant Program. It is a partnership program with Durham, Orange, Chatham, Granville, and Person Counties. It is funded by the North Carolina Arts Council, the Mary Duke Biddle Foundation, the Durham Arts Council Annual Fund, all of the partner counties, the Anika James Foundation, and the Linda A. Ironside Arts Fund, as well as other individual donors. The Emerging Artist Grant Program is the first individual artist program for career development in North Carolina. It's been in existence for 35 years and awarded 550 grants totaling over $600,000. The purpose of the program is to support artists' career development. The project that is funded must be demonstrated to help the artists take their career forward. To be eligible, you must have lived in one of the partner counties for at least a year before the application deadline. That is Durham, Orange, Chatham, Person, and Granville counties. You must be at least 18 years of age, and you cannot be enrolled in a degree program in your art form. The basic criteria for reviewing applications are three. First, the talent and commitment of the artist, as is demonstrated in their work sample and their resume and their accomplishments. The feasibility of the proposed project, which just means, does it look likely to succeed? Is there enough time? Does the artist have the resources and the skills to be able to pull it off? Finally, the impact on the artist's career as they define it in their career goals. So the purpose of the grant is really to assist the artist with the career path that they themselves define by outlining what their career goals are. Emerging sometimes confuses people because they think it means at the beginning of your career. It really doesn't. In this case, it means that you are going from one point to another. You can be close to the beginning of your career, mid-career, or even substantially advanced in your career. You just have to be making some sort of advanced change. Career also can be a confusing word um, because we often think of it as the thing that we do to actually make our annual income. In this case, um, sometimes that's not feasible in your art form. So we first of all look for your long-term commitment to mastering the skills of your particular art form and to developing your voice. We do not necessarily expect that you have made your living doing your art form. If you have, that's wonderful, but it's not always feasible. And there is not one career path that is preferred over another. Um, you might have an academic path with an MFA. You might be totally self-taught. You may have learned it as a traditional art form from family members. There are many ways of building a career, and they are always all eligible and open to consideration. This application, finally, is a chance for you to tell your story, both as an artist and a project manager. Your story as an artist is what is, what is your art form? What are you trying to express with it? What are your goals? What are your career goals? What are your immediate goals for that? Um, the way you tell us that information is, first of all, with the work sample, the work that you select for us to listen to or view or read. Um, how you describe that emergence of you as an artist. What is the immediate movement forward that you're trying to make? your larger career goals that that movement is helping you work toward, and finally your resume, which explains something about your education, how you learned your skills, um, and your accomplishments. All of these help the reviewer and the reader understand who you are as an artist. But you are also a project manager. This grant is for a project. It is to help you get the funding to do that, so you are also demonstrating that you are good at managing this project. This information comes through partly in your description of the project, how clear you are, how, um, how much you've planned and thought through all the steps that are necessary to do this. That will include something like a timeline. We don't actually require a timeline, but in the narrative you will need to explain how you're going to accomplish that within the, within the year. Also, your budget. Um, do the numbers add up? Does income equal expense? Um, is there enough detail to indicate that you've done some research and you know that these numbers will actually hold up?
One of the most important things to remember in this application is to take a little time to explain how this project is going to impact your career. Um, that is a very critical criteria. As applications um, get to the, the final evaluation phase, often that impact on the career is the decision maker. If they are looking at three or four applications that all have excellent artistic um, quality, have a perfectly reasonable project, but one or two applications seem to have more possibility for impact on the career, those are likely the applications to be funded. Some other tips. Um, we do want what we call a coherent body of work to support your application. That means that the work all has a relationship to it, to each piece. Um, this is not the time to be demonstrating that you can do a, a lot of different things. You want the panel to remember you clearly. That's by giving them one kind of work. That isn't necessarily just one sample. If you are a mus musician, for instance, you might want to do two or three samples. But this is not the time to tell us that you are talented in five or six different genres. The resume is um, really the place where you tell us about, again, your education and your accomplishments. It can be a resume, it can be a CV, it can be a couple paragraphs of narration. There's not a particular format that is important for that, but the information is. Finally, as I mentioned before, check the math in your budget. It's very easy to make a couple of adjustments, say, to the income side and forget to reflect that in the expense. And the income should equal the expense in your budget. Saying enough but not too much is one of the tricky parts about this application. First of all, you're talking about yourself, and so you're very close to your subject matter. It is easy to think that you've been very clear about what you're doing when perhaps you haven't been. It is also difficult to tell you how long your narrative should be. Some projects are very simple and they do not require a lot of words to explain. Other projects may be quite complicated and they are going to require more words to explain what it is you're planning to do. I think the best advice I can give you is to get a friend to read your narrative and then tell you what information they got from it. That is going to be the best way to make sure that you've answered all the questions that you should. Perhaps an easy way to think about your application is to just put yourself in the reviewer's place. If you were reviewing your application, what information would you want to know in order to be able to evaluate it? So if you think that there is a particular kind of information that is going to be important to the reviewer, even if it isn't specifically been asked for, you may include it. A couple of questions that we get asked frequently is, what if I'm part of a group? This is a grant for an individual artist, but I'm a dancer and I work with a dance company, or I'm a musician and I work with a band. That is fine. You need to write the grant application about you and your personal goals, but the project can certainly involve the dance company or the band a lot of art forms take, um, take more than one person to do, and that's totally acceptable, but the application, the goals, the project has to be about how it's going to benefit you in particular. Also, only submit one application. Uh, many times I will get that question, I'd like to submit one in music and in dance. Pick one, pick the project that is the most important to you. Finally, you don't want to get a grant for something that you really don't want to do. Sometimes your project might involve more than one art form. This happens particularly in the performing arts where you might be planning a performance that includes dance and music and visual art. And you're looking at the applications and you see that you have to choose dance or music or visual art. The best way to think about that is what expertise do you want looking at your application? Yes, the project may involve more than one media, but at the end of the day, do you want musicians listening and evaluating it? Do you want dancers? Pick, pick that skill and use that application. Don't worry, um, we've never thrown out an application because we didn't quite understand why they picked 
the particular media that they did. At the end of the day, not everyone is going to get a grant, though you may all submit wonderful grant applications. So we hope that in addition to possibly getting the award, that the process of going through this application will help you to build your skills in doing narratives, doing budgets, doing artist statements, which will help you in the future for other grants, for submitting for commissions, for applying for jobs or residency. So we hope that the skills to talk about yourself as an artist and to describe particular projects will be useful to you in the future. Finally, you can email me at mdemott at durhamarts.org with questions. I know that once you get into the application process, you may get a question that you just haven't thought of. I'm happy to answer questions. I will even uh, review narratives if you send them to me in a timely fashion. I cannot, of course, tell you what is going to get an award and what is not. I am not on the review panel, but I can speak from experience of listening to a lot of different review panels and reviewers. So I'm happy to share that experience with you. Thank you so much for your interest in the program. We hope that you decide to apply, and good luck.